Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Unreal Engine live stream. Joining me today are Daniel Kaiser and Tommy Jacob. And uh, as we've just seen from OC3's keynote, uh, we've just launched, I mean, or announced Robo Recall, a yeah. fantastic new VR title. Uh, it's crazy, it's hilarious. We've all been keeping it under wraps here, but we've all Which been- Which has been very hard to do. Yeah, because we're so excited about it, because we know how cool it is. Um, we have the Epic Mega Jam coming up in just one second, but first, uh, Daniel, Tommy, let's go over what did we get to see there at OC3? You sure you don't want to keep them in suspense about I the mean, Epic Mega Jam anymore? Just give it maybe one, like 40 minutes. Two, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, three. Well, one of the coolest things out of OC3 was that uh, the announcement of the Oculus covering uh, the royalties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we saw a lot of conversation about incentivizing development, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the announcements that came out was that Oculus is covering. Uh, the royalty fees on Unreal Engine titles shipping to the Oculus Store up to the first $5 million gross revenue per title. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That is, and it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of incentive to get in there and start, obviously Unreal Engine's free, so you know, download the engine, yeah. get going, start producing your VR project of your dreams, and uh, that's, a, that's a huge, huge thing and uh, excellent stuff. And, and as we saw with Robo Recall, which Tommy's here to talk about, what is possible in Unreal Engine on Oculus. So uh, congrats on the reveal today. I mean, Thanks, man. You guys yeah, been... congratulations. Thanks. That's been fun. Pretty excited? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, having, like you said, keeping it under wraps for as long as we have and knowing that this was something that not only we were excited about doing, the studio was excited about doing, but everyone that has experienced Bullet Train has been asking about when are you going to turn that into a game? And yeah. we've had to keep that quiet for so long. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's touch on that just real quick. So sure. uh, last year at Oculus Connect, Bullet Train was announced, mm -hmm. uh, looked awesome, kind of showed what was possible. And now here today we have Robo Recall revealed. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about uh, how Robo Recall builds upon what was uh, displayed with Bullet Train. Well, and actually it, it does in a lot of ways. Um, the, the goal with Bullet Train was to build on the expertise of, of Epic. Epic has done a, an amazing job as a history of building shooters, exciting, mm -hmm. fulfilling, wild shooters. Oh, yeah. So we take that, we then move it into VR, but it's looking really into making the mechanics feel comfortable. You know, we wanted to make shooting feel visceral and feel really connected to the weapon. Um, and then, um, for those of you that don't know, in Bullet Train, the mechanic for, uh, for navigation was teleportation. Yeah. Um, on top of all that, though, it was also about showing how easy it is to build VR experiences with a small team yeah. in a small period of time. And we built Bullet Train with around 15 people in about six weeks. Yeah. Um, so we continued that. So with um, Robo Recall, not only did we bring over uh, the idea of a lot of the, the mechanics with the shooting and the teleporting, I'll talk about that in a minute, but it was, again, it's a small team. You know, it's a small mm -hmm. team working on this really fun uh, arcadey experience, and that was the goal, was to bring that kind of arcadey feel into, yeah. into VR. So, um, but it started with the, the core mechanics. You know, obviously, shooting is a big part of it, and it's something that uh, not only uh, did we, I think we nailed in, in Bullet Train, but we've improved on those mechanics, and it feels so good to do that with a touch controller. It's, yeah. it's just such a nice feeling. Um, but then we were expanding on the teleportation. Right. In Bullet Train, there were these fixed portals that you could teleport to, so we as developers determined the location and the facing direction of the right. player. In Robo Recall, it's free open teleportation, so the mm -hmm. player can move around the world in the environment to where they want to be, facing the direction they want to face based on how they want to play the game. So, yeah. 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 Well, the, the movement mechanics for me were one of the biggest things because that's a, that's a hard problem for everybody in VR, sure. right, to solve. Mm -hmm. And so one of the big things about Robo Recall is being able to uh, dictate not only where you're going to go, but which direction you'll be facing. Yeah. And I think that that's key throughout the environment as this onslaught of robots, of rogue robots is coming your way. You right. get to really have a lot of control of it. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly tell us about what's happening in the game. These robots have gone crazy. What's going on? Right, so there's been a malfunction. Um, so uh, as a player, you work for Robo Ready, which is in the year 2040-ish. Ish. Um, ish. Yes. It's the uh, world's largest robot manufacturer. And mm -hmm. these, are, uh, these are robots that are designed to, to help mankind in different tasks and things. Um, in this case, this new product line has, has gone rogue, kind of a little bit off the uh, reservation, mm -hmm. and uh, they're infecting not only the, that product line, but the previous product line as well. So all bots are being infected by uh, this, this virus or this, this, yeah. this change. Um, so you have shown up on the job, and because of uh, casualties in the department, you've been promoted mm -hmm. to a recall agent. Uh, previously, the recall agent's job was to go out and service the bots and make sure they were running up to spec. 
In this case, your job has been to <laughs> eliminate the robots to prevent them from wiping bring out all of civilization. Yeah, bring them yeah. back, take them to pieces. So, um, <laughs> in uh, embracing the the touch mechanic, um, not only do you shoot the bots, but uh, you may have seen in the trailer they have points of, of interaction, so you can tear them apart with your bare hands, so it's not just about shooting. We wanted to make sure that we really embraced uh, and, and built on the, the touch component, so there's lots of handling of the bots. I love well. the mechanics around that, just seeing the uh, the beating them over the heads of their oh, limbs, yeah. punching them, and then like the ow, 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 yeah. so so good. Every little uh, bit in there feels so uh, flushed out. It's very organic, the yeah. way that you move. It, it looks fantastic. The, mm -hmm. the, the announce today is, is great. I think we're going to take a look at the trailer here in just a second again, yep, is that right? Yep. Uh, before we do that, thank you very much for taking the time to chat. I know Thanks, it's been Tommy. super, I know super you, hectic. you got a hundred things to do right oh, now because okay. it all just happened. Yeah. And yeah. I'll tell people that you can head, for more information on Robo Recall, you can go to roborecall.com right now. The website's up. You can check out the trailer again there. We're going to show it here. And I also want to tell people that as you stay tuned to the Unreal Engine and Epic Games uh, YouTube and Facebook channels, we're going to have a documentary series probably over the next month, couple of months, rolling out where I got a chance to talk with the team about the art direction, the uh, the movement mechanics, uh, the overall scope of the game, and what you can expect. So be on the lookout for that, and uh, yeah, get ready for Robo Recall. Yeah, there yeah, all right, let's roll that clip. Say hello to the latest member of the Robo Ready family. Presenting the TAL Series 9. Every bolt, every component has been meticulously designed. TAL will obey any command. It lives to serve. Serve this. We are now getting reports of such robot violence. Tal features convenient transport handles. Why did they add handles? As well as easily replaceable parts. Hey, I'm losing that. And is built from impact resistant materials. Booyah! <laughs> Trouble free service is guaranteed by our Robo Recall program. better one robot at a time robo recall all right everybody i'm not, i'm i'm like i know you're ready i see the chat you guys are exploding uh Clint, I think you're ready to give them the epic Mega Jam theme. So, I know you're all here for the Jam theme and also to see some pretty amazing stuff, apparently, you know, some, some really sick game action coming on. But, uh, you want to tell them? You ready? All right, settle the score. All right, so get out there right now. You can see that I've updated, let's hop to the main screen real fast. I've updated the uh, forum post now. It's got all of the, uh, all the info up here. Um, there's your banner. Settle the score is your theme. I'm going to roll through all of the uh, rules, prize information really quick right now, so don't, don't run off quite yet. I want to make sure that if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them and there's no confusion. First off, once you see the theme, scroll on down and look at the rules. We have detailed rules now up. These are all of the legal documents for if you want to actually see the full legalese detailed rules, they're all right there. Um, so first things first, uh, project requirement. Uh, this basically breaks down to it needs to be an Unreal Engine title. It has to be built on Unreal. Are you messing around with that? I saw that. I was messing around with that. Um, it has to be made on Unreal. Uh, it's, it can be based off of one of our uh, templates, yes, but by the time it gets to us, it should not look like a template at all or any of our starter content at all. It should be something completely uniquely your own. Um, you know, do, do your best. Try your hardest. Uh, that's all we can ask out of you, but you know, if you really want to succeed, that's what you're going to aim for. Uh, and then how to submit your entry. Okay, so a lot of people are asking me about if I don't pre-register or how does that work. So all that you have to do in order to be entered in for all these prizes is go to the submission page, which is, a, which is gonna go live in a couple minutes. I didn't want to turn it on until this was all announced or else you know, people might try to submit before it even starts. That would be cheating, come on guys. And I'm gonna be aware. So 
Um, so I'm going to turn the submission page on in just one second. You'll be able to load up your games. And anyone who's able to submit a game that was made within the JM time frame to that is going to be entered. So what you need is going to be detailed also on the submission page. And I'm going to keep, I'll tweet it out and we'll have it here linked on this landing page. Um, but you're going to need to send a, a download of your game, uh, I'm sorry, a link to the download of your game on the post in the submission form, your team name, list of team members, that's uh, total people in your team that helped. If somebody dropped out but they still put stuff into the game, include that number. Um, name of your submission, please format it as, uh, when you submit the, the file, please format it as your team name underscore your project name. Um, then we have a little example there for you. And then finally, this is a question I get asked a lot, list any content that was created outside of the jam in your submission post. Just make a, make a blurb about, I didn't have time to make the animation, model, music, etc. Just list it out there. Um, that way we'll know how to judge it. Uh, we do judge on a, on a curve based on how much you actually made yourself. And if you fail to disclose, you know, these kinds of things, it could lead to being disqualified, um, if not just uh, a heavy penalty as far as our points in judging. We, we like to take this and, uh, on an honor system because we trust you, but uh, you know, if, if we find out that someone went out and just you know, basically bought a pre-made game and put it on, I'm not going to be happy and you know, you're not going to get to win, unfortunately, because, well, that's not cool. So then, after you submit, PM me on the forums. PM me, Alexander Pascal, on the forums with your team name, project name, and your, your members information. So I need to actually have your email address, mailing address, and t-shirt size, or else how am I to know where to send you the prizes? You want those prizes, right? Well, you gotta tell me where to send them. So make sure your team's lead gathers all of your information together puts it in one thing, sends it over. If you've ever done one of our Unreal Engine jams before, you're probably pretty used to doing this because it's not too different from our standard monthly jams, but it's a week long. And now I get into the prizes, which are now much bigger. Okay, so these much larger prizes. First things first, um, we have a series of raffles. We have uh, people winning for uh, the actual categories of um, let's see here. You can you can win raffles. Let's start off with there. Uh, there is an Intel raffle of NUC kits. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're kind of ready-made PCs that are only missing a couple uh, pieces of hardware. A lot of people really like them as um, for I don't know building lighting, uh, P4 farms, etc. You can use them as a really great uh, secondary PC. Um, let's see here. Uh, Speed Tree raffle. Uh, we're going to be raffling off Speed Tree. Uh, we have several of these kind of collections of a gift card, a uh, Speed Tree subscription, Speed Tree t-shirt, and like stickers and stuff. So uh, if we get over 150 submissions, there's six of those going out. Um, let's see here, Side Effects raffle. Side Effects uh, has agreed to do a really cool raffle with uh, raffling off a Houdini Indie license, uh, swag, and a t-shirt. That's all really cool. Then uh, Allegorithmic, uh, as they did last year in the Epic Mega Jam, they uh, went out and uh, chose three of their own favorites, a first, second, and third place team. And they're going to be judging off of visuals uh, purely. So if you're making a game and decide to go all out on, on beauty of it, these guys might pick you, uh, even if you didn't get picked for one of the main categories. So maybe go all out on visuals and shoot for an Allegorithmic a prize. There's a lot of prizes to shoot for. Um, uh, the previous raffles, I should reiterate, uh, are for anyone who enters, you're automatically entered into these raffles. So um, you might not win anything and then suddenly you win a raffle, which is really fun. Uh, let's see here. Special category prizes. Um, we've introduced a couple special categories this year around, which is different than last year. Uh, coolest character design, best game under 100 megabytes, and army of one for a team that's only one person. So what we'll do for these are, if your game is full of amazing and interesting characters that are well made, you know, maybe you got together with your good character modeling friend, a good writer, and you really focused on good character design, then there's gonna be a team that wins that prize. Um, you can win this prize and still become a finalist or get an algorithmic pick, so none of these are exclusive. <clears throat> Uh, best game under 100 megabytes. A lot of people are figuring out interesting ways to make the biggest, most interesting game that they can 
uh, under 100 megabytes. So the challenge here is to make something that feels massive and is actually kind of uh, <coughs> compact. Army of One, this one's straightforward. You're a one-person team, and you've made an amazing game. So we're going to just take everybody, it's almost like we're taking everybody who was a one-person team and having a separate judging, find that guy or that one, that one person and say, you, your game that you did all your own, that's amazing. You know, and we're going to give you uh, any of these special prizes, uh, sorry, special categories are going to get their own uh, batch of prizes on top of whatever other categories they may win. Um, and then uh, final, uh, sorry, I should read those off. Those prizes will be Unreal Engine stickers and buttons, an Unreal Engine Game Jam t-shirt per team member, a Fortnite Alpha access key, uh, Shadow Complex remastered key, um, <coughs> and, um, uh, and uh, so once you, have, uh, yeah, once you have one of those, then you can actually still win the finalist prizes. So finalist prizes, I'm gonna break these down really quick. Um, three teams will be chosen as our finalist teams. This is the important one. So three teams who have the best overall um, <coughs> game design, visuals, and use of theme. It's very big. We'll each be scored on five points each, um, and the top three of those, uh, of all of the teams, uh, are going to get these prizes here. It's um, an Unreal Engine Game Jam t-shirt per team member, Fortnite Alpha access keys, Shadow Complex keys, one year license for Houdini Indie per member, a Houdini Indie promotional material packet that's like lots of swag items, a Speed Tree t-shirt, one year subscription to Speed Tree per member, and a $500 uh, Speed Tree coupon for the team. Uh, Y'all figure out uh, how you want to split it up. Um, and then every single one of those people is going to be entered into a special grand prize raffle. So up to 15 people between those three teams. Uh, will be entered into this final raffle, and this is going to be done uh, when we announce all these winners. I'll draw this live, and we'll show you live who wins it. Um, but one of those uh, members of one of those teams is going to get the Falcon Northwest Oculus Ready Tiki PC. It has a GTX 1080 Founders Edition in it. It's got an i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, terabyte SSD, and it also comes with uh, really nice parts and labor, um, <clears throat> and uh, overnight service for um, servicing it in case anything happens. So they're actually going to cover you with a lot, um, uh, <clears throat> with a lot there. All right, had to bark out a lot of stuff at you because I know half of you are running off as fast as you can to go make a game. Just want to get those questions out there. Um, let me double check here. Okay, cool. So we have a couple questions from chat. I want to make sure that uh, I can I can get to these here. Um, how many people worked on uh, the game? Okay, sorry. That's for Robo Recall. Sorry, guys. Um, they're going to be probably doing a Q&A for that one at a different time. Um, if I purchase an animation pack from the store, could I use it? Just basic, basic movement animations? Yes. Just make sure that you uh, write down in your post when you make the submission. Uh, you know, I use the asset pack here for animations. Um, so that's, that's kind of the gist of it. That's, oh, there's the theme. There you go. It's nice. It's cool. So. Uh, the submission post will go live in just a minute, but all the rules and the theme are up. And then, uh, you know, go to town. I'm, I'm just so excited to try out all the different games. Everyone's been telling me, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be making something big. There's a lot of huge teams. Um, I've got a lot of students coming out here just to try things for the first time. Don't be afraid to try and not get as far as you think. You're going to get uh, a lot of game jams, especially your first one. They can be pretty daunting. Uh, but it's about trying to get as far as you can and do as much as you can and learn as much as you can along the way. So let's all have fun with this. Uh, send me your games. I'm excited. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up now and let you guys get to making games. See ya. Clint, take it away. Bye, everybody.